I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This is a really interesting reaction because not only do we have the formation of a cyclic anhydride, we also have the transferal of different functional groups or a functional group interconversion. Now the first step in this reaction is actually going to be the protonation of this nitrile. Remember that this nitrile is a carbon to nitrogen triple bond where the nitrogen has a lone pair. And since we're in an acidic medium, what this means is that we can actually protonate that nitrogen by using an acid. So this will generate water as a byproduct and protonate at this nitrogen position. So the product of this first transformation is going to leave most of our molecules still the same. And I'm actually going to draw the product in a little bit of a different orientation so that we can see how this cyclic ring is actually formed. So here we have our hydroxyl group. And then if I was to draw several of these carbons, I would end up with this carbon here, triple bond to nitrogen. It's going to be positively charged now because it has been protonated. And remember, all of these sp3 hybrid hybridized carbons are fully flexible and can rotate, so this orientation is perfectly reasonable. And what this does, since this nitrogen is positively charged, is it actually makes this carbon susceptible to nucleophilic attack. In fact, the next step can actually be nucleophilic attack by this hydroxyl group, which is in close proximity. So this will attack this carbon freeing up these pi electrons to come make this nitrogen neutral. And the product of this transformation actually serves to close this ring. So now we have this oxygen attached to this carbon, which is how we actually close that ring. So this was the carbon that the oxygen attacked. That means our methyl group is located at this position. And here we have a double bond to nitrogen as well as this hydrogen, and this is now a neutral hydrogen, but remember this oxygen still has this hydrogen attached to it, which means that we have conserved our charge because now this oxygen is going to be positively charged. So what we can actually have happen next is an intramolecular proton transfer where this nitrogen comes and deprotonates that hydrogen to make this oxygen neutral, giving us a different five-membered ring where instead of the oxygen being positively charged, now our nitrogen is positively charged. So now this nitrogen has two hydrogens on it, which is going to make it positively charged. And remember, in this very first step, we generated water following deprotonation of the acid. And what we have done is we have made the carbon of this aminium ion highly susceptible to nucleophilic attack because it's adjacent to a nitrogen with a positive charge. So therefore, water can act as a sufficient nucleophile and attack this carbon position to free up these electrons, giving us a primary amine. So the product of this transformation then is going to be our six-membered ring system with our methyl group at the top and oxygen at this position. Now we have a primary amine located here and it is attached to a carbon that has an OH2 group on it. And that OH2 is gonna be positively charged. And now remember in this step, we had an intramolecular proton transfer. And the same thing can happen again, where this nitrogen can come and deprotonate to leave us with a hydroxyl group that's neutral. And the product of this transformation now is gonna be that the nitrogen is positively charged. So we have our formed six-membered ring, where our methyl group is at the top, here we have our nitrogen, which now has three hydrogens on it, making it positively charged. And we have this hydroxyl group down here, which can actually react next to kick off this amine by simply bringing down these electrons to form a carbonyl carbon, kicking off those pi electrons back to the amine and giving us an amine as a byproduct. So then the product of this transformation is going to be mostly our final product where we have our methyl group here, our oxygen at this position, and here now we have formed this carbonyl carbon except for this oxygen is protonated, making it positively charged. So then all that remains is either water or perhaps that amine can come in and act as a base to come and deprotonate that hydrogen giving us our final product. So this is the last step and actually how we end up generating the overall transformation to form this cyclic ester. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.